Hello and welcome to creating a design for a Christmas card or a winter themed card. So for this I've drawn out a little holly design. Uh, I recommend that you just google holly or even better cut a piece from the garden if you have it handy and with it in front of you just sketch out a few berries and some holly leaves. What I actually did to make this a fairly sort of uniform design was turn the page around as you're drawing and as you add further leaves from uh, referencing your holly designs or your photographs of holly from the internet just keep spinning it around until it looks uh, sort of finished and fairly balanced. I have ha drawn on here uh, both the feature at the end of the berry and also the little glowy bit the only thing when you're turning it around is just be try to be consistent with the direction of the light uh, in terms of where these little bright patches are landing on your spherical berries. In a similar way we'll have to look at that when we're doing the uh, contours in the leaves. So I'm going to use, uh, as we practice, I'm going to be creating really bright and glowy berries. So we're going to be using some yellow. You can either use um, a warm Windsor lemon, um, a cadmium yellow, quinacridone gold, any one of those. I have here some cadmium scarlet, which isn't necessary, you can use if you want, a Windsor red or a cadmium red, and some alizarin crimson to get the contours to uh, the dark bits to turn away from our view. Um, on the dark side, we're going to have some very cool looking leaves, dark green, glossy leaves. So you'll probably want some sap green. You can do it with sap green and just some blues, either the uh, French ultramarine or a phthalo blue. Or you can use a phthalo green involved here because a little of a phthalo green on the light sections will give it that cool kind of feeling, quite frosty feeling to the leaves. And you'll need a small round brush. And at this point, I'm also going to add a little masking fluid. Although the features are small, we could work around those little light catches. But just to speed up the process, I'm going to add masking fluid to mine. So I have one here that has the plastic nib so that you can draw with it. Uh, not tilting it up too much. We should be able to keep some control on where it is, squeeze it to get it going, on where we place these little lights. Of course, they may need tweaking later on if they're not exactly right. I'm going to speed this up. And now, of course, we need to wait for the masking fluid to dry before we can paint the berries. Not every berry may have a light catch. Some of them, if they're shriveled up, uh, they'll be looking more pruney and kind of darker coloured. Um, and we're not going to mask the lights on the leaves. We'll just paint around those. Okay. You can tell when the masking fluid is dry because it will have changed colour slightly and gone darker. So I can see that those are pretty much all done. If you're in doubt, just put your finger on it. If any comes off, it means it's still wet. Um, otherwise, we're ready to go. Usual, I have a brush, paper towel handy uh, to dab onto, and some clean water right here. Okay, so we're going to damp the brush and mix down a little yellow into quite a rich colour, a rich thickness like full cream milk. Uh, we want these, the colour to be really glowy in these uh, berries, so we want quite an intense colour from right at the beginning. We're not starting with a soft wash or anything. And we'll paint this right over the entire berry area. If you've got a lot of um, pencil lines, you might want to rub them out to a minimum so that you don't end up trapping a lot of grey graphite 
under your, if you're using cadmium, that's the worst yellow to trap grey pencil lines. So just working your way through. That's all my berries covered. They're all still wet. I'm working quite fast. I'm going to rinse out the yellow from the brush, dab on my paper towel, and picking up some cadmium red. These holly berries, well, in my reference pictures, they're very bright orangey red. So we may use more of the orange and the Windsor red and less of the alizarin in today's project. So while these are still damp, you can work into them. I'm going to leave a little area. Remember the, the way you've put the uh, masking fluid on is going to end up being white. Don't worry about going over the centers that are going to be dark. Those will, it will just build color towards the dark. Um, so what we have to decide is how much yellow to leave, and you may decide none. And just have that glow coming through beneath the orange. Of course, it may vary from one berry to another. You don't have to do them all exactly the same. There does seem to be quite a lot of uniformity amongst the holly berries. I'm working quite fast because these ones are now getting quite dry and I wanted the colours to blend nicely in a natural way while they're still damp. Now I've done two layers on my berries. I've done the yellow base layer and I've done scarlet, cadmium scarlet, a very orangey red. Now I'm going to add a little Windsor red, which is a richer, more of a neutral sort of red. It's not really towards crimson yet. Um, so we'll add some touches of this around the edges to give them a little bit more volume. particularly in between one berry and another, you're likely to get a pool of richer red colour towards the side away from where the light's hitting. And um, I'm tempted to have another small brush handy with clean water on it, damp, that we can just uh, do some micro blending with. We don't want to make everything wet, but I don't want to have an obvious line around the edge here. I want it to just fade into the rest of the colour. It's taking quite a while to do all the berries with one layer, so if you want to split it up into groups and do some at a time so that you can get more blending in before they dry, that's absolutely fine. And here is where you start to see that glow effect when you've got the more orange towards the centre and the darker colours towards the outer edge. Let's blend that in again. If you find that you're picking up too much red on your blending, brush, just give it a rinse and a dab out on the tissue. You'll see if it's clean or not. So I'm going to speed this process up now and you can see what I'm doing.
So my reds are pretty much finished. I'm thinking that I'm not going to add any alizarin crimson or darker colours until after I've done the greens. Um, I think the green, they, they're really going to group pop against the greens and I want to set them to stay nice and solid and bright. So uh, when this is thoroughly dry, we'll start with greens. So for the leaves, I'm going to start in with a little bluish light on them. So you can either use a very pale greenish blue or I'm going to even use a little bit of this phthalo green blue. Sh it's a, yes, Windsor blue, Windsor green blue shade very watered down because these are going to be the lights on our leaves and that's not to say that the leaves um, they do have a little yellowish center stripe but other than that this color could go anywhere on the leaf because uh, we can paint the darks over it and that just means that that little soft cool light is going to be there on the leaf before we add the dark greens and it's going to save us a lot of work. So just wash in this very, very pale coat on anything that's a leaf. Now the thing also to look out for is gaps in the leaves near to the center. I think the way my arrangement is, I've actually got this leaf sticking up in the top here, which is covering up a lot of the gaps. But one of the characteristic things, then you know it's a holly leaf, is that there's quite a lot of gaps around the berries before you see the leaves start. And that be, can be quite uh, interesting. So I think I've got a gap there. Although, because I've put this one under it, maybe it wouldn't make sense, I don't know. Um, so I'm just floating this bit of color in to help. It's also helping us to identify where the leaves are and what, where is not a leaf. <laughs> There's definitely leaf here. Hmm, I'm not quite sure what that line is. I think we better make that leaf all the same. Um, but you can see here I've got a gap. This, this leaf is kind of turning up. That one's turning up. This one doesn't start till further up. So it's quite nice that we've got that little gap there. If it makes sense, I think it makes sense. Yep. Okay. So moving on now, we're going to go into the stronger greens. So you want to mix down a fairly thick mixture of some sap green, picking up a little bit more fluid, get it to move and then we're going to add some, I usually like to flow on a layer of green and then throw some darker blues into it, but because the holly leaves are all really dark except for that light patch, I'm just going to let some of this indigo that's already in my palette mix with it. You can use French ultramarine or indigo. And you'll see that we end up with a lovely dark, dark, holly-like green. Now, again, with having your damp brush handy and your piece of trusty tissue, you're going to work around these leaves Trying to leave some and look at your reference pictures also so that you can see where the shiny bits are likely to be with the, the um, curves and changes in the shape. So uh, let's go down the centre first, leaving a little line in the centre in case we want to put that yellow flash in down the centre. And then we'll leave a bit of light there, like a triangle, join it up to the centre. Coming around the berries. Okay. 
Now with my other brush, I'm going to soften the change there. Bring that up so that it's now it's fading to that bright patch. Take off the colour where you're picking it up. Same over here. We want that to fade out to light. Now if you've um, erased a lot, <laughs> you might find the surface of the paper has been rubbed up. That's what's going on right there, I think. This is not particularly good watercolour paper. Um, because it was a small piece that we're doing, I just thought I'd work with it. But it looks like it's going to give me quite a messy outcome. Well, you live and learn. <laughs> so by letting the colour pool like that, we'll make sure that it's a really dark green where it's um, laid on in the centre there. So I'm going to speed this up as I move around. And remember, you can turn your painting if it makes it easier for your hand not to smudge something. Right, so I've got my leaves done in a very simple, uh, simple way. I'm just going to blend that in a bit. I see it creating a bit of a line. You have to keep an eye on them as they dry in case any softening further. Um, I could, of course, wait till that's dry, go in with another layer of green and make it even richer and darker. Or I can choose that I want my painting to look less messed about with. So at this point, what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to add on a little streak of yellow into the centre of those leaves. And then I'm going to add in the darks on the berry heads, on the berries, and um, see where that takes us because it may not need anything else. I'm very tempted to put in some spatter. You guys know I love love a bit of spatter. So I might have to do that, but that's totally optional. Um, I'm going to put make sure you put this yellow on when the leaves are dry. That's why I'm sort of working my way around according to whether they're dry or not, not necessarily the next leaf. And uh, it doesn't have to be a very obvious colour. Can just be a hint. This one's kind of interesting because the the leaf is curving over so much that the uh, you don't get a point at the end; you get a roundy bit. Same with this one, which is I like the variety of having some of each of those. Of course, the darkest darks should really be where all the leaves are bending in away from the light beneath these berries. So um, if you're finding that you've got some patches in the centre that are too light against the berries, you might want to just reinforce those with a little bit more green. Uh, trying to puddle it is a good idea so that it concentrates as it dries. Don't know that that's a verb to puddle. Um, so here I'm just suggesting some little tiny darks in between the berries to give them a bit more space between and form and stuff. Uh, these are overlapping those, so it's not really necessary right there. This one is going underneath the top leaf, so let's put a little bit more dark right there. We blend that in. You have to be careful you're not going to pick up colour at this point instead of adding more in. So making sure that your colour is richer in pigment, less watery than the previous layer. 
or what's already on there in the process of drying. This is in the process of drying. You shouldn't really be messing with it. You guys know that. Just adding a bit more intensity of colour there. This one's going underneath, so this one can be dark and allow the lighter one on top to shine out a bit more. And so now I feel that I'm fiddling. So what I'm going to do before I fiddle it to death, it needs just a little touch more. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, which is one of the problems. <laughs> um, I'm sure there was an area where I was looking at a leaf, some gaps between leaves, but actually it looks a bit odd. So I might just fill that in as if it's part of that leaf. Just a lighter section on that leaf and we'll just give it a, a nice blending in there. That does look like it's a gap, that's a nice shape gap and this one too is a nice shape gap. That maybe should be a bit more pointy on the end of that leaf. So the negative shapes here are important as well especially when it's sort of on, a, on a point like that. And of course you can step back and gauge what the overall impression is. You may not need to put in as much as you detail as you think. So while I've got this dark green, I'm going to just add a little bit more indigo into it, or you could use some alizarin crimson to create a real nice blackish dark. And I'm just going to put that onto the heads of the berries. I'm not going to make a big deal out of them, try and get the shape and details and stuff. I'm just going to blob it on in approximately the right place. Now some of them will point in different directions, which you can look at from your reference picture. Some of them out to the edge, some of the, the berry point is um, within the circle of the berry. As long as you've got a variety and they seem to make sense with the pointing in um, out from the centre of the little cluster of each, that is probably what's most important. That actually is a, a berry point, not a light. Um, not sure where that one is. This one's up here. This one's here. And okay, we have one there. And one here. Sometimes you can see where you've had to put the light catch around the berry head. Let's learn what the name is for that little point. I don't think we can see it on that one, and it's good to have some variety where you, you can't see one of them. It's neatening up shapes here and there in the same way that uh, acrylic is forgiving when you need to change up the shapes of things. Sometimes you can get away with it in watercolour too. That's a little stalk. So is that, actually. That probably means that should have been more of a gap behind there, but still. And um, just referencing what these look like between the berries. I think we'll have a little darker colour right there. And again, I'm starting to fiddle. So um, without further ado, I'm going to let all of this dry. Then we're going to erase, lift off the masking fluid and see what our light catches are like. And then I'll see if it needs some spatter. Okay, now dry. 
So let's um, lift off the masking fluid. You can either do it with a finger or um, a light eraser, or if you have one of the special lifting blocks, masking fluid lifting block, you can use that too. Since it's just a little bit, I'm sure your fingers would be fine. Just don't pull too hard or you may disturb the surface of the paper. My paper is particularly sort of, um, well, it's not very thick, I think it's about 60 or 80 pound weight. So I'm being careful not to tear it. And we may find that there's too much masking fluid has been applied, so it's, it's uh, blocked out too much of the colour. Oops, there's a bit starting to tear. So we may have to go around and um, add back some reds into our berries. Just trying to use the corner of the eraser so it doesn't do a lot of damage. You can probably hear the rain just starting up. Okay, so now I think that's everything. If you feel with your finger, it's probably better at telling whether all the masking fluid's gone than your eyes. You can see there where it's starting to lift the paper, so that's not, not a good one to uh, overwork, but I can still feel that there's something sticking on there, so okay. Now, another time, at this point, we could also, while we have the eraser, erase the outside lines on these um, poly leaves. And make sure you have a soft eraser or a kneaded eraser would work too. And very gentle not to disturb too much. If you like the pencil lines in it, that's absolutely fine too. And it says you can't have them in there if you want them. I just wanted to see how whether it would make it look a lot sort of cleaner if I take them off. I think it might. Because you may lose some of the definition in the outer edges of the leaves when I'm catching the light. Whichever it is, you need to be consistent. If you take them off on one side, you better do it all the way around. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. So, uh, decision time. Holly's looking merry and bright. I think they could probably do a little bit more red here and there. Um, it's a decision for you to make. So. Um, at this point I'm going to wind up the video since you're probably having trouble hearing me and you can decide if you want to cut out your piece of paper maybe you already sized it correctly to make a card you can either stick this onto another piece of card if it's not watercolour paper or if you've um, pre-folded a, a sheet of watercolour ready for it to be a card that's fine too I just can't bear to use that much watercolour paper <laughs> as, as a folded piece of blank paper. So um, I'll be cutting mine off and then securing it with uh, some kind of stick glue onto a card background. Whichever you just, whatever you decide to do with your card, whether you give it away to a loved one or someone special or keep it for yourself, I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas with it and Happy New Year. Thanks for watching.
Merci Multimedia.